This year has not been great, but luckily for anime viewers like myself, we can time travel to any year we want. So I decided to fire up my microwave time machine and head to 2006. When I got to 2006, I found the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, and friends of course. This anime has much acclaim when it came out in the late 2000s, and thanks to the brilliant animation standards of Kyoto Animation, it still looks better than most modern anime in the current decade. While we are here speaking about the art, I would like to note one very interesting thing about the art style. The anime has two distinct and separate character designs. The teenage girls in this anime are animated in the style of mid-90s magical girls with disproportionately large sparkling eyes. The main character and other males are animated in a more modern realistic style. The character designs are interesting because they theoretically relate to the story concept of this anime. I'll get back to this in a bit. Yes, let me talk about the story concept, because this one is one of the most interesting ones I've ever come across. Gather around everyone and meet God. This girl is quite literally God of this universe. Anything she ponders on significantly becomes reality. She wishes for a world with espers, time travelers and aliens and it was made so. Haruhi has the ability to create and destroy the universe at will. The only catch is that she is completely unaware of her ability to do so. This becomes even more dangerous when one comes to understand the character of Haruhi herself. She is easily bored and wishes for the most ludicrous things at times just for entertainment. Going back to my earlier point about the character designs, it would not be unreasonable to say that the girls have the 90s magical girl character design simply because Haruhi desired it and thought it would be more interesting than something more normal. Yeah, it's getting real metal. Welcome to the rabbit hole. This idea illustrates the strength of the story concept. It is so flexible that it allows the anime's content to push into any genre and present our characters with a myriad of different situations for storytelling. Haruhi's combination of eccentric and morally bankrupt personality combined with her god powers make her the ultimate plot device. The characters around her are distinct too, with their own ideas and development. The story concept of God Suzumiya also works well because of how well the setting is presented to the viewer. The anime itself goes into great length to make sure the viewer understands the rules of Haruhi's universe. They do this through philosophy and dialogue. In episode 5, they reference the anthropic principle. This is from Wikipedia. Scientific observation of the universe would not even be possible if the laws of the universe had not been incompatible with the development of sentient life. Proponents of the anthropic principle argued that it explains why the universe has the age and the fundamental physical constants necessary to accommodate conscious life, since if either had been different, we would not be around to make observations in the first place. Anthropic reasoning is often used to deal with the fact that the universe seems so fine-tuned. So, basically, we observe the world the way it is merely because it's already that way. Therefore, if some omnipotent entity was making changes to the core principles of the world, we would observe it in the new way because it is that way. Confused yet? Me too. Let's keep going. But basically, we have no way of knowing how many changes Haruhi made to the universe, and once she had made a change, all the inhabitants, save her close contact circle, would accept it as if it had always been so. Haruhi the anime gives itself a strong foundation to build the world on. It does avoid entering into too much details because that isn't what the plot is about. 
This is just a story concept to use as a platform for storytelling. It's not perfect, but I do appreciate that they at least attempted to address this early on in the show run. Just as Haruhi the character plays fast and loose with the rules of the universe, the anime itself follows the same principles in its directing style and even its release approach. Haruhi Suzumiya has four different watch orders. The initial airing in 2006 saw the episodes being aired in a non-chronological order. Haruhi episodes have up to four different episode numbers based on which airing we are considering. This is not the only confusion the production staff put towards the viewer either. I'm of course talking about the Endless 8 arc. The Endless 8 is the story arc that is most synonymous with the Haruhi Suzumiya anime and I couldn't possibly talk about it without bringing up this arc. Spoilers for Haruhi season 1 and 2 as well as the anime film The Disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya beyond this point. So, the director Tatsuya Ishihara makes an intentional effort to piss off the fans who were peacefully enjoying their anime experience. I've seen time loops in anime before, but by far this was the worst one. Other anime time loops usually focus on different aspects of the loops until the main characters become cognizant of what's occurring and escape the loop. So even though it shows us the same period of time, the content varies. Like what we see in ReZero or Steins Gate. In Haruhi, the anime it shows us the exact same content in each loop, with the changes being so minimal that it feels like you're watching the exact same thing again and again. We end up watching the same episode of anime for about 4 hours. It's even more annoying because when the characters do become aware of the loop, that doesn't stop it from occurring. That sequence where they become aware is just added to the loop. Even the dialogue and Kion's introspection is exactly the same. In fact, the changes are so limited I can tell you in a few seconds. The clothes they wear in each scenario is different. The children Haruhi interact with at the public pool are different, and some of the camera angles and character positions. Yuki's mass changes in each loop, as well as a few other very minor adjustments. ReZero tells its entire narrative from time loops, but every single episode is different because Subaru is constantly aware of the time loop and therefore approaches the timeline at different angles, allowing for good entertainment to the viewers. Haruhi, the anime, took a lot of flack for the Endless 8 arc. Some of the reviews were harsh. I was a bit hesitant to put it down because of how good everything had been to that point. I found it hard to believe that Ishihara had made a mistake. I know for a fact that these 8 episodes of the, the same thing were not included as a cost saving mechanism because Kyoto Animation reanimated the same thing in glorious fashion. Different camera angles, clothes and character positions ensured that nothing could be reused. I watched the anime film The Disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya and then everything became clear to me. It was not a mistake. I understood why Tanigawa did what he did. So. While us viewers suffered through the 4 hours of the same episode, there was one other person suffering too, a being that Haruhi created that transcends time and space, the alien Yuki Nagato. Yuki is able to remember every single time loop, which according to her, the number is 15,532 repetitions. Now, the loop is August 17 to August 31st. That is 14 days each loop, that's a lot of time. For simplicity however, I will consider each loop as a single episode. This is a fact that I believe Ishihara intentionally set up since every single one of the 8 loops we endured were confined to one episode. So that's 15,532 multiplied by the half hour time slot for a regularly aired episode of anime. So that is 465,960 minutes, 
converted to hours those are 7766 hours or 323 days in anime terms she spent close to a year watching the same episode of endless 8 with no breaks in between more like the endless 15532 at least you had the option of watching something else in between the mere 8 episodes so can you imagine the suffering yuki endured this is the primary idea I believe Ishihara wants the viewer to take away from the Endless 8. This is done for the viewer to develop a strong understanding of Yuki Nagato's motivation in the anime film. The arc executes this so well in fact that people are genuinely upset. The idea then is for you to imagine how Yuki must feel if you're as upset as you are. The understanding for Yuki, at least for me, transcends the confines of the anime itself. So in the film, the disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya, Yuki steals Haruhi's god powers and uses them to turn the world into a normal one, where Haruhi's madness does not impact the environment and Yuki herself is a regular girl with a less cold personality. It is a world created in Yuki's image instead of the crazy machinations of Haruhi. We the viewers who sat through a fraction of what Yuki did in the Endless 8 can fully understand her motivations. She was tired of Haruhi's world and wanted a normal one, so she took action. This understanding also allows the viewer to better connect with the decision Kion has to make when it is placed before him. Kion has to choose whether to leave the world as Yuki made it or return it to Haruhi's world. I genuinely found myself desiring Yuki's world. <laughs> to be left as is, Kion thought differently. There is some hope however, because 5 years later, Studio Saint Light released the disappearance of Yuki Nagato. This is a 17 episode spin-off story which occurs in Yuki's created universe. It basically tells a story of what would have happened if Haruhi's world was not restored. To me, this entire anime feels like an apology to the fans, upset by the Endless 8 and the disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya. The anime is pretty much fan service. There are many jokes in here referencing the original seasons such as Kion becoming uncomfortable when Asakura has a cooking knife in hand or the fact that Asakura is super strong and has sufficient strength to pick up Yuki and Kion with one hand. Yuki also has the same super calculatory powers with math problems as her alien counterpart. The inhabitants of Yuki's world don't appear to notice these minor quirks however. It's important to note the character designs again. The ones done by Studio Satellite are far more normal in this production for all the characters. This is in line with my earlier sentiment about Haruhi's universe and the eccentric character designs. This is a normal romantic comedy with normal animation. This anime then allows the viewer to confirm whether or not Kion made the right decision in the 2010 film. We get to experience both Yuki's world and Haruhi's world. Honestly, the disappearance of Yuki Nagato deserves its own video, which I plan to make if this one gets enough likes. One more thing in this. Can you believe that these people really put a summer episode from August 17th to 31st in this spin-off anime? It didn't loop, but that was one last middle finger to the fans. So 5 years later, we get a ninth episode of The Endless 8. <laughs> the light novels for Haruhi are coming to an end this year. The writer Tanigawa announced as much. With this, I hope to one day get a continued adaptation. One thing I want to make absolutely clear is that this anime is weird. Its character design, its story concept, its release strategy, its characters, and the complex meta around the universe. It is strange by any story's standard, and I genuinely feel like that's how anime should be, weird.
I love the experience of diving into this and becoming a fan. I enjoyed making this video too. Subscribe for more and see you next time.